Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brandon here and welcome to a brand new video here on the channel. Today we are looking at the brand new uh, scouting update here on Madden NFL 22. Hope you guys are enjoying the content here on this channel. If you are, hit that like button, button subscribe. If you guys are new to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys haven't already, hit that sub subscribe button. Also, turn on the notification bell so you guys know when I upload uh, and when I uh, live stream. Also, if you guys are new to the channel, I do have a Bears franchise and a New York Jets franchise that uh, I alternate days on. So if you guys want to go ahead and check that out uh, down in the description, I should have two uh, links for the both playlists. If I don't, it's in the channel. It's on the channel. You guys can go ahead and check it out. But let's get into it. Madden has finally, finally released this scouting update. Actually, real quick. Those of you who are wondering, the Jets and Bears franchise, I will be getting this update on there. It's going to take a, a little bit of time, but I, I will figure it out. Um, I'll just have to restart it, make all the same moves, force certain win, force the, the games to go certain ways. And then to, so that way we have the same record. I'll make sure we have the same players. I'll make sure that they are the same overall, same attributes, everything. So everything will be the same. The only thing that will be different, obviously, would be statistics. And um, I guess other teams' rosters might be slightly different. So, anyways, that's what's going to happen in those two videos or those two series. So, just wanted to let you guys know, those of you who are watching those series and those of you who are new to the channel as well, you can go ahead and check those out. And we'll actually be doing a lot of the scouting in those series. So, here we go. Uh, new scouting update. Now, when you start a franchise, let's say you start a franchise in the preseason, you can go in and then hire your scouts um so i am not gonna i i accidentally skip past that um i already made my scouts but uh yeah so that's something that you can do so you pick your scouts based on what you want them to do so uh let's go ahead and scout college players let's jump in here and i can show you guys so you'll go into scouts and you can and by the way you can fire in higher scouts at any point in the year so you will have a level three scout a level two scout and then three level one scouts and then your scouts have a position expertise so they, they could have up to two so as you guys can see my level three tier scout his expertise is quarterback my level two is left in and right in my uh the level ones that i chose we got a corner a wide receiver and a and a safety scout so it, it depends there's there's a, there's a ton of different options but you can only have one level three or one tier three one tier two and then three tier one so you go in you figure out okay well i want a quarterback or like let's say your team that that needs a quarterback you really need a running back and you need some improvement on your defensive line maybe you need a defensive tackle then you can kind of start scouting you need to put your level ones on some of those ones and then put your level three and your level two on the on the one on the positions that you really really do uh need so i went ahead and i traded all the best players here on the chiefs and i just added a bunch of first round draft picks so that way we can kind of test them some things out and uh you know just just have some fun with this see who we draft and, and whatnot obviously we're not taking this super seriously we just want, kind of want to test this thing out so i have a lot of first round picks we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten could have gotten more but whatever uh 10 first round picks and then we have a, a second third fourth no six no fifth a six and a seven so that's the plan now once you do that in preseason you go into week one so there is a if we go to scout college players here there is a key info here so week one prospects become available so in the preseason you can hire your scouts right you you essentially know what you need so if you're currently the chiefs right and you don't trade all the best players what do the chiefs need well i'm probably looking at defensive line i'm probably looking at corner I'm really the whole defense i guess uh, their defense is really bad but that's that's kind of you know maybe if i'm the chiefs obviously we're, we're, you're good at quarterback you don't need a quarterback you're good at wide receiver maybe you can look at wide receiver later on in the draft maybe draft an athlete or something you're good at tight end offensive line you may need a little help so maybe you do a, a level one on a left guard and a right uh, on a scout that has a uh, that has expertise at guard so left guard and right guard maybe you do something like that or, or tackle uh and then defensively we want a level three scout on linebackers. Linebacker, big deal. 
we need a linebacker, right? Or a safety or whatever. Put, you know, maybe you put your level two on defensive ends, maybe, and then you put two level ones on uh, defensive tackle and a uh, corner. And then the last level one, you know, you can put a wide receiver, or whatever you want to do. So essentially that's what you're trying to do. Then in week one, the prospects do become available. So that's where we're at right now. Week two, you can select position focus for area scouts. More progress revealed via national scout in week seven. In week eight, select position focus for national scout. Week 11, select super focused scouting players and the free agency stage two. You get your combine info. Free agency stage three, you actually get a pro day info. So there's occasionally you'll have a player skip the combine. Well, now these players can have your pro their own pro days. Now combine is the official number. Pro days can be a little bit different. So it'll be interesting to see consistencies through that as we look at different players. And then free agency recap, uh, you can select private workouts where essentially you'll know almost everything about the, that player. So re report completion unlock. So now next each player, you'll see a percentage of where they're at. So 10%, you can see player traits and base athleticism. Pretty basic stuff. Every 10%, you get a skill letter grade. And then at 70%, you get the player archetype. And at 100%, you get the player talent plus all remaining skill letter grades. So in this, one thing that you guys do need to know that I, as far as what I've messed around with, you are not going to be able to scout as many players, fully scout as many players as you did in the previous version of this. So it was very easy to scout in the old one, right? You you knew who the best players were. You could find them very easily. This one, it's a lot more complicated and it's a lot more of a guessing game, which is more accurate to real life. You're going to have busts. You're going to hit on some really good ones and it's going to be amazing. But there's more than likely a lot of times, I mean, you go look at any team, you know, they don't, they don't have five, you know, superstar players coming onto their team every year. Right. Um, and that's how they're kind of trying to do this. So it's good, but I will say, I think I would like to know a little bit more about the players and we'll get into that, uh, as we go, but I, there, there still needs to be some tweaking to this, but so far I'm liking it. But again, there are some bad things. There are some downsides, but there are some really good things. So we'll go over that all that in this video but let's get on to the prospects so it's week one we can now see our prospects and now remember uh actually let's go back here to region breakdown so you have a national scout a west scout central northeast and southeast think of it as you know national obviously the whole country west you're looking at you know teams like cu you're you're talking about usc cal oregon washington you know those schools right Central, you're thinking about Texas and Oklahoma and, you know, Nebraska and, uh, and Northeast. You're looking at, you know, the New York teams and Penn State and blah, 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 Ohio, Ohio State, uh, Southeast, you're looking at Florida and uh, Alabama and Ole Miss. So that's kind of what, you know, SEC, think Southeast, SEC, right? So that's kind of the, the deal. So what you want to do specifically is your national guy at least in my opinion, should be your tier three guy, right? Because you're going to get the most information from that tier three at whatever position in our case at quarterback for the whole country, which is perfect, right? Now, let's say you're looking at safeties and you go down your prospect board and you see a lot of the safeties are actually on the west side. Then take your scout who's scouting safeties and put them and have them focused in the west. Now, I think throughout the year, you should probably move these guys around. So there's four. I wouldn't move the national. I mean, I guess you probably could. I can mess with that later on. But what I'm thinking is there's four and a quarter of the season is about four games, right? So I'm thinking, what if you, what if every four weeks you switch them up, you rotate them, right? So right now we got safeties in the West. So after four weeks... What if we move him to central and then who's doing central? Uh, this scout uh, that's looking at corners. We move him to northeast. Then we move the wide receiver scout to southeast and the southeast scout to west. That's a thought. Maybe maybe that's something we do. 
maybe halfway through the year you take your tier three guy and you switch him with your tier two guy you know if that's something that you want to do so there's there's things that you kind of gotta i don't know we gotta i think there's a lot of things that we gotta test and, and see what the best way to do that is but the more ground you can cover, obviously, the better. So I think that's kind of what I want to try and do in this video is every four weeks, we're going to rotate the scouts and see how that works um, and, and see if it's a bad idea or a good idea. We're, we're going to test it out. OK, so that's what that's where we're at right now. Let's go into the players here and you can see that there's a projection in top five. Now, these can change, right? We're only in week one. Uh, maybe what week two or three in the, in the in the college season so this is gonna go up and down right you're gonna see a lot of guys moving and whatever but as of right now we're kind of here so the, the best player is reggie cobb now remember my defense van i'm having them focus in the sec the southeast vanderbilt right south southeast area so and then you can actually change it to a region so southeast you can see reggie cobb is there um you know in the central you got some receivers you got a middle linebacker so you, you got you know uh you can you can change your regions and, and see specifically okay what are some of the players that i really want to look at in this region maybe i'll put my scout at, at, at that spot so uh and then you can change and you can change your scouts when, whenever you want i believe so that's something that maybe you have a different scout every week or every four weeks or something like that uh so right now we got reggie cobb now you can see his completion percentage is at 25 percent, which is pretty good now what can we see at 25 percent? remember you there's our key info here um actually if you go back to uh whatever that the other page in key info let me actually have a screenshot of it here so every 10 percent you get a, a skill letter grade 10% you can see the base player traits. So basically for this player at 25%, we can see the, the player traits, the base athleticism, and we could probably see two skill grades. So the player traits are, you know, the stuff like, um, uh, can your uh, pass rusher, does he have power moves or finesse moves? Does he have, can he, uh, uh, does he go for the ball, right? Can he uh, strip the quarterback? Um, uh, some of those, like the, the, the you know, the, the basic trades, like for a quarterback, does he have a tight spiral or, um, you know, for a receiver, does he, uh, does he high point for the ball? Does he, you know, have conservative catching? Does he, you know, whatever, what type of catching does he have? What type of, uh, what type of kind of player is he, right? So that's kind of what you want to see in these player traits here in the player notes. So always looks for the massive hit. So he's a big hitter. Uh, loves to use a spin as a counter move relies on uh, swift arm over move. So he's a finesse pass rusher. Uses speed to power to bull rush blockers. Motor is always running hot. So he has a high motor. Motor Often looks to rip the ball from runner. So he has strip ball uh, trait. And then typ typically avoids getting flagged. So he's disciplined. Okay, so that's kind of what, you, what you're kind of getting from, from that, right? The player traits. You can also see player profile. So height, he's six foot three, 279. He's 21 years old. He's right-handed, doesn't really matter. And then he's from Vanderbilt. And then you can see top fits is the Saints, the Broncos, and Bucks. Now, I'm a Broncos fan, so I know that they run a 3-4. So he fits in a 3-4 system, right? The Buccaneers run a 3-4 as well, I believe. So he, they, he fits in more of a 3-4 system um is maybe what they're saying or four three maybe it's four three now that i'm thinking about it because he's, he's a right end i don't know anyways you could probably move him to outside linebacker he actually looks like an outside linebacker in a way if you're running a three four but whatever you guys know what i mean so uh so let's see what else can you see here so you hit the rb go to physicals now this is where you can see the base athleticism so you've got different ones so obviously you got poor, marginal, decent, solid, good, great, elite from worst to best. Okay. Uh, so he, for his acceleration, great to elite. So he's really good. Agility, great to elite, really good. Change of direction, good to great, pretty good. Uh, jumping, great to elite, really good. Speed, great to elite, really good. Strength, solid good. So he's not really a power rusher. He's more of a speed rusher. Change of direction could be a little bit better, but that's all we can see for now for him at 25%. And then we get two letter grades. So stamina is a C and then pursuit is an A. So pursuit, really good. Stamina, C, I mean, I don't know. I don't know really how much that matters, but whatever. So that's what we can see from Reggie Cobb 
right now. Uh, let's look at a quarterback. So we got Sean McCollum here, Eric McCord. We'll look at these two guys and then we'll kind of just move on from there. Um, so let's see here. He's six foot two, 213, 23 years old. He's right handed out of Oregon. Uh, never seen a window he won't throw into. So he's a bit of, more of an aggressive thrower. Beautiful spiral. So he has tight spiral. Uh, quick to throw at the slightest pressure. Okay. So he has, I guess, throw away would be, or maybe he's par more paranoid. I, I'm not sure which one that would be. Uh, and then knows when to throw the ball away. Okay. Loves to run and play outside of structure. Fast, old school, compact throwing motion. His physicals, acceleration, great to elite. Agility, great to elite. Change of direction, great to elite. Jumping, great to elite. Speed, great to elite. Strength, great to elite. Throw power, great. Uh, hello? Sean McCollum looked amazing. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Uh, let's go and look at his skills. Now, he's at 20%, so we can see two different skills. Throw under pressure is a B. Throw accuracy short is a B. So, I would love throw under pressure to be maybe a little bit higher than that, but that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid, so we'll, we'll take that. Let's look at Eric McCord here. So, Eric McCord, he's a bigger quarterback at 6'5", 231, 22 years old, out of Notre Dame. Throws right-handed, quick to take the check down. Beautiful spiral on all of his passes. Quick to throw at the slightest pressure. Knows when to throw the ball away. Will break the pocket occasionally to throw. Fast flick of the wrist throwing motion. And then physicals, great to elite excel. Uh, great to elite agility. Great to elite change of direction. Good to great jumping. Solid to good speed. I, I'm guessing solid to good speed is probably right around the 70s. Uh, strength, great to elite. And throw power, great to elite. Skills, we can see he has A awareness and A throw on the run. So throw on the run, he's pretty good. Uh, so that's kind of what we can see. Now, you can favorite a lot of guys. So we're going to go ahead and favorite these guys that we've looked at. And now when you're looking at early on, I, and this is where I would probably go through quite a bit of players week one just initially. And the reason why is I'm looking at little like signs. So for a corner or well, OK, so for a quarterback, I'm looking for a great to elite throw power and maybe like a good to great speed or something like that. If I see any of those, I'll mark him as a favorite just initially, right? Like those are like key things that you wanna see. Uh, so for a corner, I'm looking for speed. Great to lead, he's a really good athlete. I think early on, if you can locate the really good athletes and then just go from there. And then, you know, as you learn more about their skills and stuff, then you can take them off your list. But I would, so basically what you're doing is you're favoriting a lot of the athletes. So I'm gonna favorite him, uh, and a lot of the, a lot of the athletes are probably gonna be a pretty high uh, on the draft board initially. So what I'm looking with this guy, he's a right end. Maybe let's see, what, is he more of a speed rusher or a power rusher? Relies on a swift arm over move. Uh, likes to use spin. Okay, he looks more like a speed rusher, and uh, you can't see that right now. That's his archetype, right? That you can't see. Uh, but speed, great to elite. Jumping, great to elite. Strength is decent to solid. So yeah, he's a speed rusher. He looks like a really great athlete as well. We're going to mark him. Oops. Uh, we're, we're definitely going to mark him. Uh, Tony Bra uh, Bradham. Let's see if we can get a guy that's maybe not that good of an athlete. And maybe we end up leaving him off. So like this guy, good to great speed. But he has great to elite strength. Match that with great speed. He could be really, really good. Solid to good agility. Acceleration is great to elite. Change of direction is good to great. He's more of a power rusher for sure. Um, let's see here. Relies on swift arm over move. Uses speed to power to bull rush. Typically avoids getting flagged. Often looks to rip the ball from runners. Motor is always running hot. Maintains poise at the catch point. Always looks for a massive hit. He looks, I mean, at least early on. I like it. I like it. So maybe we'll mark him. Uh, as a guy that we want to look at. So I'm going to go through this and essentially just find the really good athletes. Maybe I'll go like through three rounds of, of guys. So this is going to take a while, but it's it's a lot of work. But I think this is really cool to kind of see these players. So maybe I'll, I'll find a guy that like doesn't really look like a good athlete and we'll keep him off. But maybe we'll revisit some of these guys that I kept off and see maybe are they technically really good? Because if they're technically really good, maybe we would take a look at them. So 
Uh, anyways, I'll go over a lot of these guys, favorite a bunch of guys, and then as we go throughout the season, I'll start unfavoriting guys. But let me get through this. I'll get through maybe like 60 guys, maybe two rounds of guys, and then uh, I'll go ahead and advance to the next stage, which would be next week. Didn't take me long to find a guy here that I'm gonna actually not put on my board. Uh, we got a wide receiver here. He's six foot three, two thirteen. So he is a bigger receiver. But if we look at his physicals, his speed is solid to good. That is not good enough. Even at six six foot three, if maybe it was good to great, maybe I I, I would put him in there. Um, but it's just not good enough. He's not fast enough, at least for my liking. Maybe uh, eventually we might want want to look at him, and maybe we really like him eventually. But catching traffic is a D. Yeah, uh, not loving it. Not loving it at all. So he's a guy that I'm definitely going to keep off my big board. Now, can he get better? Possibly. I think overall it's going to actually fluctuate throughout the season. So maybe he gets better. Maybe we take a look at him later on. But for now, we're going to keep him off my board. Doesn't really initially look great. So we are here in a week two. And let's see here. So we got to select um, position focus for area scouts. So what does that mean? Well, current position. So the national region, I think, is locked to his position. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so he gets a 10% efficiency boost when scouting quarterbacks. Um, but our level, our tier one guys, so we got to select position position focus here. So obviously we're going to select free safety. It's his number one position. So we're going to do that uh, for that scout was assigned. So free safety. Central region, our guy, uh, we want him to look at corner because that's what his specialty is. And right, look at that. So he gets a, So you can use him at a different position you could have him scout a different position you just won't get the efficiency boost that you get because he's his expertise is a corner right so you want to make sure that if his if his expertise is not what you want him to scout fire him and get a new guy okay uh northeast uh we want him to scout wide receiver boom and then our southeast guy we want him to uh let's have, have him look at left end and maybe later on we'll have them uh, look at right end. You know, this is something, you know, maybe halfway through the season we switch uh, his and as well as uh, I, uh, this Patrick Nobles guy, we can maybe switch him to strong safety, maybe like halfway through this, halfway through the year. Um, I believe you can change it. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure you can change it. So that's all we kind of really have to do for week number two, just make sure that is set. Uh, and then one thing that you can look at is, as you guys can see in the bottom left corner of each player, there's a, you can see that if they move up or down on the board. So Sean McCollum's actually moved up. It's probably more like, I think this move is more so because Sean McCollum probably did something really good. More so than Reggie Cobb didn't do something really good. Um, but let's see if anyone dropped a ton out of our guys that we, I went through the top 50. Oh yeah, look at this guy. Keon Ship moved up 10 spots. Wow. Okay. Brandon Gilbert moved up three. Is there anyone in the top 50 that we didn't look at that maybe? No. Some of the guys that we favorited um, probably might have dropped down. Let's see. Let's see, uh, someone must have had... Yeah, here we go. James Shelby, he dropped a lot. Obviously, I didn't uh, I didn't scout him. So, I wonder... Uh, let's see. Let's look at his physicals. I wonder if that's maybe some a part of the reason. No, I mean, he looks decent physically. So, maybe he dropped because of a uh, off-the-field issue or something. Um, so we can maybe keep an eye on, on that guy, but a lot of that movement will actually you'll see in the story So I think in previous years the stories kind of told you who had like a player development Whereas now it's, it's different. I think they kind of show you I, we don't have any stories yet But they kind of show you why someone's maybe dropping maybe he's a super talented guy, but he got kicked out of school or something right or um, you know, the, some player just had a really good game. And so he went up the draft board and uh, more eyes are on that guy. So maybe it's, it's going to be harder to uh, maybe draft him. Uh, maybe you thought you could get him in the second round. Now you might have to move up into the first round to redraft him. You know, something like that. That's where the draft stories uh, come into focus. So we don't have any other anything to look at with scouting. We're done until week number seven. So I'll see you guys there. Here in week seven, more progress revealed via National Scout. So we should see uh, a lot of improvement towards, uh, or a lot higher percentages towards uh, the quarterbacks, I believe. But another thing that we get to look at is mock drafts. That's something new this year. Uh, so we're 
projected to have the top three picks, which is pretty dope. Uh, but you can see it, they have us taking Reggie Cobb, uh, Javier Waters, and then Eric McCord. So Eric McCord has flown up the draft board. And as you guys can see, completion percentage wise, they're at 50%, whereas most other players are at 40. Uh, Michael Gore is at nearly 60%. That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, so you can, you guys can kind of see we're starting to get a bit of a higher percentage on some of these guys. And then there's different mock drafts. So there's actually five throughout the year. So you'll actually be able to kind of see, you know, where, you know, certain guys. I, I'm curious. One thing I want to see, Eric McCord versus Sean McCollum. Sean McCollum looks really, really good. I'm very excited to see more of his uh, uh, scouting report. But uh, these two, I'm very excited to see kind of who ends up being better. Also, Waters has kind of flown up the board. So, and this is a mock draft. So we can look at uh, the prospects and just see the big board. So Sean McCollum is actually still number one. Cobb and then Coles and then McCord and then Waters is down at number five. So you can kind of see the mock draft is just projecting where guys are going uh, based on the team. Roy Bullard has moved up three spots as well. Four spots for Drew Whitaker. Uh, 61 spots for Delonte Newton. Hello. Okay. Six foot three, 243. Uh, good to great strength. Port Martin. So he's not a guy that can move out of, outside the pocket. He has great to elite throw power though. He's a stick. He's basically a stick um, at quarterback. But six foot three, maybe he has good throw power. Maybe he has good accuracy. We uh, will definitely mark him since he moved up sixty spots. That's uh, that's insane. That is insane. Uh, let's see. Keon Ship is, continues to move up the board. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me mark this guy. Uh, Drew Whitaker moved up four, but his physicals I didn't love. Good to great throw power, good to great strength, good to great speed. He's pretty good uh, at everything, so maybe we do mark him and just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep track of him. I'm sure he's not really going to move too much. Jonathan Conway as well. He moved up 10 spots. Uh, great to elite in a lot of things with speed, but solid to good throw powers. Not great at all. And uh, you can start to see, we're starting to see more uh, of these grades come out. So for Sean McCollum, he's now at 50%. So we can see five of his skills. So he has A spin move, A break sack, D carrying, A throw under pressure, B throw accuracy short. Not really the things that we want to see, but um, you know, there's, there's his uh, top skills uh, or some of his skills. Uh, revealed to us let's look at reggie cobb here at the right end who uh, we really like and some of his uh skills we can see now four a pursuit b impact block c injury oh uh, they're only giving us four or three oh yeah those no, no. a pursuit c stamina b impact block c injury okay so that's kind of where he's at let's get a look at uh maybe cliff coles cliff coles five foot ten forty percent scouted a man coverage that's really good. Great to elite speed. A block shed A awareness. Okay. Well, initially, Cliff Coles looks amazing. Um, let's see where Waters is at. Let's see here. Uh, a tackle. And then C pursue, B play rec, and D stamina. So obviously, we're, we're starting to get uh, a little bit more information on some of these guys. The highest completion percentage, though, is. Uh, Someone at 59%. Who was that? Michael Gore. And I don't think it matters because I don't think we get an extra skill rating, unfortunately. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we only get the five. But, I mean, C man coverage, not that great. Z, C zone coverage. So, at corner, you want that much better. Physically, he's really good. But here's the thing. He's six foot three, 204. He could play safety. He could play you know linebacker like he's a big dude with really really good athleticism and c man the c zone you could put him as safety or even coverage linebacker in a four three he could be pretty good or middle linebacker in a three four he could be actually really good so he's an interesting prospect we'll go ahead and get to week number eight where we can now select position focus for the national scout oh that's why the quarterbacks haven't raised enough is because we haven't selected our national scout um that's why but uh yeah let's get to week number eight we obviously set our focus for 
or no so just more progress was revealed via national scout uh and now let's look at let's set our focus for the national scout which we will make quarterback and mock draft number two comes out in week number eight sean mccollum is projected to get the number one overall pick we now don't have the the top three picks unfortunately uh we're there a couple teams must have won unfortunately for us but sean mccollum projected to go number one now uh eric mccord has dropped uh waters uh is up coal up or waters went down Cobb went down one cole went up one let's see roy bullard has gone up 11 yeah this guy's good he looks really good he's six foot three a great to elite everything in physicals and the skills has a power moves for a middle linebacker b impact block he looks really really interesting um let's see anyone else move up or down like crazy d roberts went up eight uh melvin Aldridge went up 11. um let's see any anyone else that's uh and you can only see the first round i believe with that so let's look at prospects though and uh actually no let's go to i think region breakdown yeah national now we can select we're gonna select quarterback obviously and so now we should see a big boost to the completion towards our quarterbacks oh you know what i forgot to switch uh the regions let me do that um let's see scouting and let me i want to test if we rotate the scouts around how that maybe changes some things right so let's um uh, can we actually change it oh i guess we can't we can't okay so you can't change your regions for your scouts and you cannot uh, i guess you can't fire them or anything like that so that's good to know that's good to know okay so let's go ahead and go to the next uh week where we need to know things and that would be week 11. here in week number 11 we can select super focused scouting players so focus players choose focus players so i believe let's see so read the results your scouts compiled from in-person observations at practice and in-game action okay so we want to choose we don't want to delegate that and so we can choose up to three players that we want super focused so the guys that like okay like we need to know everything we can about these guys everything so i'm curious i'm not gonna focus on well look if you need a quarterback maybe you really are are, are not sure about mccollum or mccord and you just want to say screw it i want to know everything about these two guys these two guys look both incredible we need to know literally everything so we really need a quarterback let's do that and then let's say you know what i really want to know a lot about reggie cobb he looks really good i want to know all of his top skills now maybe this is something where you do maybe lower players who have lower com uh completion percentages and and stuff like that maybe you want to do uh you know i'm really curious uh to see how good michael gore is because he's six by three maybe we can move him to linebacker or safety i, I need to know some of those more uh, more of those attributes or something like that so maybe you want to do that maybe you want to know more about um uh some of these underrated quarterbacks that flew up the 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 draft boards like delante newton but for us this one i'm going to focus on the top of the the draft sean mccollum reggie cobb and eric mccord now obviously look here's the thing and and i'm going to say this real quick and i'm going to say it again uh at some point i don't know everything about this new scouting update it just came out this is the first time i'm really messing with it so if you guys have found any cool little tips or tricks or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. I'm probably gonna make mistakes. Uh, you guys are too. We're, we, you know, there, we'll eventually find like the perfect way to scout. But right now, it's it's really early on. So, you know, it's it's based on you know what positions you really need and stuff. When you need every position, then obviously it makes it a lot more difficult. But when you you know you only need three or four or certain positions, it actually really makes it a lot easier to focus in on certain positions. But anyways uh like i said if you guys have any tips or, or tricks that you guys maybe have found and maybe you're watching this a month later then let me know in the comments down below but that's all we needed to do in week number 11. so uh we should actually know more though about a lot of these players so as you guys saw we have 80 percent of sean mccollum's uh board so we know his archetype now remember you can see at uh at a certain percentage uh 70 percent 
you can see the player archetype now. So we can see that Sean McCollum is a scrambler and we should now see be able to see eight different uh, skills. So A break sack, D carrying, C play action, A spin move, throw accuracy mid and short is a B, throw under pressure is an A, throw on the run is a B. So we can now see some of those things. Uh, let's see, uh, let's look at Eric McCord here. See his skills, he's a strong arm quarterback. Throw on the run is an A, throw accuracy short is a B, Stiff arm C, spin move B, A awareness, A injury and C juke move. So. Uh, we didn't get through actually deep or mid and we didn't get through under pressure for him that those are kind of the things that we're mainly waiting on for him and physically uh, he has solid to good speed so maybe he could have like the high 70s low 80s speed that'd be really cool but let's get on to our next stage which would be a free agency stage two so the season just ended so we're not at the next spot where we get the combine info but i did want to show you guys the completion percentages and look at that we have 100 percent we know everything everything about quarterback sean mccollum and quarterback eric mccord i'm curious to see out of all the quarterbacks okay the rest of them are 80 at 80 percent so we know a lot about those two and then we know quite a bit about reggie well we know everything about those quarterbacks but now we know a lot more about reggie cobb so cobb is up to 75 percent and uh he's a speed rusher so we can see his archetype now and then his skills, we should have gotten maybe two or three more. So A awareness, A finesse moves, A pursuit, A tackle, B impact block, C injury, C stamina. Uh, curious to see what his block shedding would be and his power moves and play rec. Uh, we're still missing a lot of like the big things with him. But Reggie Cobb looks really, really good. But let's get a look at Sean McCollum, six foot two, 213, 23 years old, scrambler archetype and his skills we know all of his skills a throw under pressure b throw on the run b accuracy deep mid and short uh let's see break sack is an a awareness is an a play action is a c uh stamina is an a the injuries a lot of these guys have really low injuries i'm curious to see what like rating that would be like a d injury is that like an 80 or is that like a 40 20 like what what is that like I, i'm curious to see where that range is um but mccollum looks really really good let's get a good look at eric mccord though he's the only other guy at 100 percent strong arm quarterback at six foot five he has a awareness a break sack a injury a play action uh let's see c stiff arm a accuracy deep a accuracy mid a under pressure a on the run okay he looks ridiculous solid to good speed i'm curious to see what 40 time he runs eric mccord looks really good like for a quarterback he looks amazing but sean mccollum could be like we're literally looking at like a lamar jackson type player versus like a um josh allen type of player this is fun. Like, this is cool. This, this makes it so much more fun because we're slowly learning about these players. Okay, I'm really loving this. I This is a lot of fun. Let's get to free agency stage number two, though, and uh, let's get our combine grades. So the first uh, or the second, technically, offseason week, we can see mock draft number three. So now we'll get a good look at where we're picking, which were, wow, our draft picks did not work out like I wanted them to. That's a bit unfortunate. I mean, we can use some of them to move back up into draft. But Sean McCollum is projected to go number one overall in this mock draft. He's been projected to go number one uh, pretty much all season. Well, except for mock draft number one, I guess. Uh, Cobb looks he looks like they, you know, the mocks really like him. Eric McCord is at five. So we might actually be able to take McCord at, uh, at a later type of pick. Maybe we move back up. Uh, maybe at three, we want Waters or Cobb or Coles um so there's the mock draft and then uh let's get a look at uh, i don't think we well, i mean we might know a little bit more about the prospects here let's see 75 percent for cobb still no everything so this is my issue with the scouting now is that a lot of these guys at 40 percent 
haven't moved at all. I would uh, like, could we know maybe like 60% and then the guys that maybe add level one scouting are like at 80, level two is maybe at like nine, I don't know, that might be a little too much, like 70 and 80, something like that. Um, our level two was a, what was our level two? I can't remember, was this safety? Um, no, it was, oh, it was, it was defensive end. It was defensive end. But see, look at that. I mean, some of them are at 65%, but most of them are at 40%. And I guess that it, it's, it's based on the region too, right? So, uh, you know, these guys weren't in the region that we wanted him to be. But at that point, it's like, man, why, why can't they let us like have them, you know, scout some of the different regions? I don't, that's, that's my only issues. I feel like we know a, a lot about like, maybe like three of the players and then we don't really know anything about the rest of the players so that's kind of my issue with it is like the high end is really good but it there's a massive drop off to what you know about the rest of the players and that's the hard part and, and the one part that i don't like about this update is i i want to know more about a lot of these players like the fact that i only know about like you know I mean, the fact that one I know 100% about two guys, and that's it. And then the third guy is at 75%, and I know really nothing else about any other player. That's really disappointing. So that's my only, like, nitpick, I guess, uh, with this uh, with this um, update and with the scouting. But obviously, it can be improved and, and whatnot. Like, for the focus players, like, maybe give us, like, five at minimum. I, I mean, I would say maybe, like, seven, you know? where you more than likely have seven draft picks right rounds one through seven and then maybe you do that so i would say like the sweet spot would be like seven or eight um at bare minimum though it should be five not three three is really low but anyways let's get to the combine grades uh now that we can see these and uh it's under physicals here so this guy is very fast he's the fastest quarterback sean mccollum he ran a four three one what oh he has 90 plus speed this dude is ridiculous he is unreal that now the unfortunate thing is his accuracy is a bit lower but his throw power is elite his throw power is elite oh my god this guy's i see why he's projected to go number one overall let's look at Let's look at uh, Eric McCord here. What is his 40 time? He ran a 471. Great throw power. So, oh wow. Okay. So I see, I was hoping that his throw power would be elite, but it's not. Um, he's just, he's a little bit more accurate, but high end, McCollum is better. McCollum is way better. Accuracy is a bit low, but that's something that can get better. He's so fast at a 4-3-1 speed. He's really good. Let's look at Reggie Cobb here and see his 40 time. Uh 468. He was third. Uh great speed, elite jumping, good change of direction, elite agility, and elite acceleration. Um, so let's see, let's see if there's anyone that we know that maybe uh, did not uh do the combine. Let's see. He did the combine. He was the third fastest, a 439 speed. It says it's great. Um, okay. Let's see. I really want to find someone who maybe like would have skipped. I wish you could kind of see like initially and you don't have to like enter each player. That's another thing. Like before, you know, you can kind of see everyone's combine rating uh, just overall. And you can see if, you know, someone maybe uh, didn't. Uh, uh, didn't go to the combine. Also, one thing that when they're at 100%, you can see their uh, t their talent level. Uh, so both quarterbacks are round one talents. You can't see if they're like early first round talent or mid first round talent. That's another thing. Like this guy's 100% scouted, and I don't know like his where like his overall range is. So, but I mean, again, you, you can see his skills. So I don't know. I don't know. Let me let me know in the comments below what what you guys think. Let's get a good look at. Uh, there was that 
one. Let's see. There was a middle linebacker. Was it Roy Bullard? It might have been. That I'm really interested in. Six foot three. Ran a four five seven. Uh, a power moves. Okay. So again, we still like their their completion percentage for a lot of these are so low, and they've been at forty percent since like what week seven? Like we should know more about. Like come on, come on. There's no way that all of a sudden we just completely stop looking at them. You know, like that's that's my my kind of gripe about this. Uh, Delonte Newton. He's very slow, but great throw power. Okay. Uh, let's see. Anyone else? There's a corner that I was interested in. Yeah, here we go. Michael Gore. He's six foot three. He ran a four three six. He's the fastest corner in the class at six foot three. Wow. So that means he has definitely ninety plus speed. But could you imagine him at linebacker at six foot three with ninety plus speed? That's kind of insane. Or even safety because his, his coverage isn't really that good. But I don't know. I'm curious to see what his tackling is at. But all right. So again, like I don't like I just I wish these percentages were higher for the other guys because now all we have left is pro day info which again doesn't give us that much info really uh and then the private workouts which I believe we you can only do like three more so it's just, I don't know I feel like it's not enough but let's go ahead get into the college pro days and see let's look at Sean McCollum here and look at his pro day he ran a 426 at his pro day. <laughs> this guy is absurdly fast. Absurdly fast. Goodness gracious. Now remember, NFL Combine is like the official, official time. College pro day, though, he did run a 426. Usually with pro days, though, their numbers are slightly better, usually. Eric McCord, let's see, did he run faster during his pro day? He did. He did. Okay. So he has he has decent speed. He has decent speed. Not great, but but it's decent. Again, I mean, with the scouting, I, I I wish I could maybe find someone that didn't go to the combine because then you can see his pro day. But that's really the benefit about pro day. So if someone skips the combine, you can see what their pro day numbers are. Uh, it's not super super accurate, it's not the official numbers, but it's you know you you get an idea right if someone skips the combine. Um, so that's essentially what that is. Free agency recap now. Uh, I believe that would be the draft day, right? We can select private workouts. Uh, okay, no, it's this one. So free agency number three. You can uh, do the private workout. So you can have the computer select them if you want. Obviously, we're going to select them. So you can choose three guys. So I guess through the whole year, you get six of them, which is good. But, but okay, I'll say this though, right? We did, we selected Cobb originally, right? I feel like the guys that you select should be able to get to 100%. And the fact that we don't know 100% about Cobb after we did a specific scouting report on him, we would have to do it. We would essentially have to use it twice on him. Like, I feel like if you're going to really focus on a guy, it should give you 100% instantly, right? Um, so then maybe instead of using your these specific workouts on your level, your tier three guys that you should know about, 100% without spe doing specific workouts with then you can focus on other players so then you know more and a lot about a big a bigger range of players instead of knowing two guys at 100% the third guy that you had selected is only at 75% and then like like now this one I I, I mean if I select the guy at 40% I'm not gonna much know much more about him. Like let's uh, let's select Michael Gore. He's at 59%. I doubt it even gets to 100%, which is super disappointing. Let's select Gore. Let's select. Uh, I'm gonna leave Cobb and just see if that maybe ends up going. No, I see it won't. I I, just, I already know it won't. Um, and then let's get a good look at. Let's see who else. Who else are we curious about? There was a linebacker that I'm really curious about, so maybe we look at him. Um, yeah, it was Bullard, I think. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the other middle linebackers here. Um, there's Bullard, Ayers, Hargrave. Yeah, no, let's look at Bullard. I'm pretty sure. I mean, we used the level 
two on defensive end. So we know some of these guys, it's a lot more of, of some of these guys, but not a ton, like 65% with some of these guys. Yeah. I mean, see that, that's the thing is like, we just, we don't know enough about like the majority about these guys. And that's, that's the only thing that's a little frustrating for me. It's like, I need to know more to even like think about drafting them. Right? Like that's the only thing, but let's look at these, uh, prospects did with that. Would it go up now or do I have to sim a week? I think I have to sim a week. So let's go ahead. Actually, did I look at Cobb? I can't remember. Um, Let's look at middle linebacker real quick. It should still be at 40%, right? Yeah, it's at 40%. So yeah, I think you have to skip another week and then we can get ahead and look at how much their percentages went up. So that corner was at 59%, middle linebacker was at 40. Um, and then whoever else we did, I believe was at 40. I don't know. And we lost connection to EA servers. That's awesome. Uh, Cool. So the next week here, we uh, can now see mock draft number five, um, which is cool. And let's see. I'm curious to see Roy Bullard. See from 40 to 80 percent. Like I feel like, I feel like we wasted that that one thing because like we we don't know much more about him. We don't. We know he's a run stopper now, and we know four more skills. So B impact block, B play rec, B awareness, C tackle. Ooh, yes, tackling's not that good. Um, but we don't know, like, I feel like we should know where his talent range is, at the very least. Maybe we don't know all of his uh, attributes, but we should know his talent level. We should 100% know where his talent level is. See, that's the frustrating, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's really frustrating. That corner, I guarantee you he's at 99%. Where is he? I guarantee you that corner is at 99%. Where'd he go? What was his name? Uh, Michael Gore. Uh, did we not select him? Maybe it's going to take another week to know for that stuff to go through. Or did we not select him? We selected Reggie Cobb too, right? So we just don't know those guys just yet. But there's a there's the mock draft for mock draft number five. Let's go ahead and advance to the next week. Then we should know uh, more about the guys that we did the private workouts with. So let's go ahead and go into scouting and look at the three players. Uh, so yes, Cobb is now up to uh, oh, he still has seventy five percent. Who did I do specific scouts with? Bullard. Gore is still at 59%. Did that not even work? Or did I remove them somehow? Huh. Maybe you have to actually enter the draft or this is a glitch? I'm not really sure. Let's start the NFL draft. We did private workouts with those guys. So we should know. Let's view our draft board here and see. Yeah, we, we still don't know anything about these guys. Roy Bullard's went up, but Gore did not. Did I screw that up somehow? I might have screwed it up. I might have uh, accidentally screwed it up. So did we only really get a good look at one guy? On accident well, that sucks <laughs> that sucks I don't know I don't know that's really really uh, really weird okay so let's do this I really want that quarterback so let's go into the Trade Center and I'm gonna go after the number one overall pick with the Chargers here and I mean they don't need a quarterback so they probably wouldn't take him or would they? Is the game still stupid? And they do that? I don't know. I don't know. Let's get the number one overall pick either way. And uh, we will offer them like 29. Do we have a one next year? No. We'll offer them one and two. Will that be enough? I don't want to give them too much. Uh, let's give them 22 as well. Two first and a second. Okay. 
that works out. All right, I probably gave him a little too much, but that's all right, that's all right. So we are now on the clock. Let's go ahead and make our selection. We're gonna take Sean McCollum. I think out of the two, I think McCollum is better. Better throw power, uh, he's faster. He's not necessarily as accurate, but that can get better. I mean, his physicals, dude, are just, he ran a 4-3-1 and then a 4-2-6 in his pro day that is stupid that is unbelievable we're gonna go ahead and draft him so here's the other thing throw power so we get to see his ratings okay so when you go to skills you still see that so you only get to see a few amount of his skills uh, or his ratings but look at his speed oh my god dude I've never seen a quarterback that fast in a in a draft class. And his throw power is so good. Start better development. The one thing that they don't give you is their overall and then the rest of their attribute or their ratings. You'll find that out in the in the recap. I actually like that. I actually like that. I don't I don't mind that. But start better development, 95 throw power, 94 speed. Oh, he's nuts. Sean McCollum, dude. It makes me want to like keep this franchise going and like actually play this. This is crazy. Okay, let's uh let's see who's at uh, number two. Okay, you know what? One thing, can we look at mock drafts? I'm curious. Oh, by the way, I haven't even been looking at the stories. Kind of curious. Let's see draft. Uh, let's see draft trade involving uh blah blah, blah. delay and rehab bumps right tackle Chris. So like these will bump guys you know down the board or up the board or, or whatever but it's not gonna actually tell you hey this guy has star better development I, at least i don't think so i think that they changed that one thing though you will want to know i'm guessing is the heisman lsu receiver hoist heisman eric perez won at the heisman so maybe that's someone that we look at they're also showing you a player of the year uh in the fcs which is maurice hall so maybe that tells you, okay, he has star better development. Um, best running back went to Josh Patterson. Okay. And let's see, anything else? Training injury forces Morgan to withdraw from combine. Uh, so maybe he, so he got injured for the combine, but maybe he has numbers for his pro day. Um, All-star MVP goes to Johnny Scarborough, the running back. Uh, it's a good running back class for sure. So those are some things that those things uh, they can kind of show you. Let's look. Do we want to move up to two? I really want Reggie Cobb, but hmm. do I move up? I really want Cliff Coles too. Yeah, I want to take both of these guys. I want to take both of them. So let's move up and grab uh, the number two overall pick which would be from Atlanta. So we now have the number two overall pick and the number three overall pick. So I'm just gonna go in order here and grab both of these guys. So we'll, we will grab Reggie Cobb. We know enough, I think, to know that he's probably gonna be really, really good. Hopefully he's a first round talent. Uh, he's a speed rusher at right end. He was the third fastest defensive end, great speed, um, elite jumping, elite, acceleration elite agility we know his skills are pretty good a tackle a pursue a finesse moves b impact block a awareness yeah his uh his overall is probably gonna be really really good um i keep on exiting on on accident but let's go ahead and draft him he does have star better development we obviously don't know his overall uh 83 speed 90 acceleration we don't know his rating for finesse moves he has 81 strength though which is pretty good so we just basically what we know is some of the specific ratings and then whether or not he has star or better development excited to see how good reggie cobb is and then we'll go ahead and make our pick for the third overall pick and i'm gonna take this cliff coles guy i think think and then hope that bullard um who won the heisman again i can't remember i really want to take gore who won the Heisman? Was it Patterson? Oh man, I can't remember. I can't remember. I wish they uh, would have put like a, maybe a little logo next to their name or something saying, hey, this guy won the Heisman. 
you know, like at the Heisman Trophy, uh, like a little picture of it right next to them. That way you kind of knew. But anyways, let's go ahead and take Cliff Coles, who, I mean, we know that he has great speed, good strength. He was the third fastest corner, ran a 4.39. Uh, his skills, A block shed, A awareness, A man. Um, so we know he's pretty good. Uh, hopefully he's a first round talent. Star or better development, 94 speed, 93 change of direction, 94 acceleration. Yeah, he's uh, he's a really he's really good athletically. He is very very good athletically. Cool, very cool. So that's our third overall pick. So with the fourth overall pick, the Raiders, they went ahead and took Eric McCord. It doesn't show their overall, which I see. I wish I could know like his overall, since I I mean if like, I, I mean I guess you could see in the draft recap. So I guess it's not the biggest thing in the world. But I want to know. I, I want to know what his overall is. I don't know. I, I just, I want to know. With the fifth overall pick, the Steelers take Tommy Gant, a right guard. See, like, now it's like, I, I mean, Waters goes at right end. So now it's more about, I guess, knowing just who goes, but you just don't know their overall. Ooh, we're going to get our picks, though, uh, or the guys that we really wanted. So I want the linebacker. I want that other corner that I'm thinking about moving to linebacker or safety. I might make this into a little mini series. I'm not going to lie. This is a lot of fun. Um, let me know in the comments below. Do you guys want this as a little mini series of like a... A rebuild maybe we're not playing every game like the other two series but it's just a little fun thing with the new scouting thing uh that's more like quick so maybe we do like a a season each year or something like that i don't know let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see something like that but anyways roy bullard i'm really interested in i want to look at the rest of the middle linebackers really quick to make sure i like his size as six foot three um and then let's see he was fast right great speed elite strength four five seven Ran a 4-5-3 in his pro day. A power moves. His tackling is, is low, which is a bit of a concern. There's a Sterling Ayers here, who's six foot one. He ran a 4-5-3, so he's slightly fat or slower. Slightly slower, I guess. Um, we just don't know anything about him. Like physically, he's not as gifted as Bullard. There's Hargrave who is six feet tall as well. He's slightly slower, I think. Oh, yeah, we just we just don't know enough about these guys. That's the only like round projection one to two. Like, I guess they, these guys would be late first, early seconds. These guys are mid first, more than likely where they're going. At corner, I do want Michael Gore. And then I think there was another corner that I was interested in. Was it, was it Tevin Dupree? He's a bit slow. No, no, no. Solid speed. It wasn't him. Uh, oh, yeah. I didn't favor him. Uh, it was. I think it was Grayson. He's six foot one, four four nine. Okay, decent speed. Good speed. Uh, man coverage is a C. Tackles a C. Okay. No, there was someone with like elite speed. D. Robert, who is also bigger. It's definitely one of these guys. Six foot two. D. Roberts. 439 great speed i think it was this guy c press c man okay and then let's look at melvin aldridge who ran a 44 so he's he's right there as well b tackle though is actually really good hmm i don't know i don't know melvin aldridge is bigger to where maybe we can move him around a little bit more as well with this pick i'm gonna take the linebacker Roy Bullard, uh, and hopefully he's really good. But let's take Roy Bullard here. Star or better development? Man, I am hitting on these. Uh, 89 speed, good, really good for a middle linebacker at six foot three, especially. 80 strength, 80 change of direction, 81 jumping, 84 agility, 91 acceleration. Um, very, very excited about Roy Bullard. And then with the next pick, I'm gonna take uh, I think Gore, the other corner. So let's take him. We could probably trade down a little bit, but I'm just going to start taking, guys. Um, so, Michael Gore. Star or better development. 94 speed. 95 change of direction. 95 excel. 85 agility. 86 jumping. Goodness gracious. He's six foot three with 94 speed. Could you imagine that at linebacker? 6'3", 204 is big enough to play like sub linebacker, but more, 
like we can put him at safety too, especially if his, his coverage isn't that good. That's really cool. That's that that's he's gonna be a fun fun player to uh, to see how good he is. The next pick, the Jets will take Tevin Dupree, and then we will go ahead and take that other corner uh, that I'm like really really interested in. Uh, oh, we could take a running. Well, hold on. I want to look at. There's a couple other guys, so I want to look at a tight end that I completely forgot about. And who was the Heisman winner again? The Heisman winner. Oh, was a receiver. Eric Perez. Okay. Let, I want to write this down. Hold on. Well, I got these guys. So real quick at wide receiver, it was Perez. Uh, yeah. He's later on in the draft. He moved up 79 spots. He's around two to three. Let's look at his physicals here. He's 40% scouted at six feet, 191 suffers from concentration drops. That's a bit concerning. Exceptional body control on the sidelines. Fights for every single inch as a runner. Greatest nagging passes in midair. Avoids big hits following catches. Wants to take every catch to the house. Typically avoids getting flagged. Uh, great speed at 4-3-4. He was the fastest wide receiver. A carrying, B run block, C deep route, C awareness. He's probably not the best route runner, but he did win the Heisman. He's six feet tall and he's the fastest receiver. That is definitely a guy that we want. Um, how do you mark them? Or can you mark them anymore when you're in here? I don't think you can. So we, we need to remember him. He's maybe a late first round guy or early. Well, we don't have a second round pick. So maybe we'll use a late first just for the hell of it. Uh, and then I don't feel like trading down. I just I just want to pick guys at this point. The running backs, uh, it's between Patterson, Hall, and, uh, and Scarborough. Where is Hall? Ooh, Hall might be really good value. Three to four. He's gone up 72 spots. Five foot 11, rarely protects the football. Okay, his carrying is not good. Suffers from concentration drops. Fights for every single inch as a runner. Avoids big hits. Wants to take every catch to the house. Poor speed. Poor speed. Okay. We're not drafting him. Uh, all right. So the other two is Josh Patterson. He is five foot 11, 208. Great speed. Second fastest running back. Uh, he doesn't really protect the football either. Okay. And then Johnny Scarborough, uh, five foot 11. He protects the ball. Okay. Just maybe off of that. Maybe we pick him. Good speed. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like uh, Scarborough won the one of one of the games MVP. I, I I'm guessing it's like the Senior Bowl or something. He's probably older. Yeah, he's 22. Whereas Patterson is 21. So maybe we just based off that we take Josh Patterson. Uh, but he's a first round guy. So maybe we wait on that. Tight end, there was a couple guys I wanted to look at. Jack Hampton, I wanted to look at. And uh, Arrington and Black, I wanted to look at. So Hampton, he's six foot six, great speed. He ran a four six five. A awareness, A pass block, C injury. Um, but like physically, he's really good. And he's six foot six. Martin Black, he is six foot four, ran a four five eight. So he's the fastest tight end, not by much though. So he looks pretty good because Hampton ran a what? A 4.65, but then it ran a 4.59 in his pro day, which is interesting. And then Deontay Arrington is 6'6, six six, ran a 4.66, six, six, ran a 4.65. Okay. So I would say it's between the, the first two tight ends, Black and uh, Hampton, more than likely. Um, so maybe we take them at the end of the first round. So with this pick though, I'm going to take the, well, who do I want to pick? A corner just went. Hmm. A corner just went. Can we see? Oh yeah. We can see our draft picks here. We have 15 and 18 after this. Okay. Oh, you know what? We should probably take Patterson first and then we can take uh whichever corner we were going to take after that so yeah let's take josh patterson here we're gonna take josh patterson star or better development 93 speed 93 change of direction 87 agility 92 acceleration he looks pretty good 
pretty good. Star or better development. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. It said his best position was DB. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. That, that'd be interesting to see. Uh, Marcus Chamberlain goes. Um, George Casey goes. And Gilchrist goes. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and take the corner I wanted to take. Which was... Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Or do we want to take the tight end? We could probably wait on the corner, which I believe was Aldridge, right? At six foot two, he ran a four forty. He's one ninety four. Was that was that him, or was it D Roberts? Six foot two, one eighty eight, four three nine. Gosh, I don't know. C, man coverage. Who do I want out of these two? Who do I want? Always looks to intercept the passes. I think this guy is physically better. B, tackle is really good. I'm going to take Melvin Aldridge. So, let's go to all positions here then. And we will go ahead and take Jack Hampton, who I think is the best tight end. So six foot six, Jack Hampton. Let's go ahead and draft him. Star or better development? This is ridiculous. Are you kidding me? 86 speed, 87 acceleration, 88 agility. He looks good. 82 jumping, a little low, but he looks really good. Star or better development? I wonder, did they increase the star or better developments? I guarantee all, all these guys have star development. There's no way any of these guys have better than that. No way. No way. I feel like we're going to get screwed with it. Uh, Whitaker goes. So now we will go ahead and take the other corner, which is uh, D. Roberts. Or no, 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 no. Melvin Aldridge. I always forget. Melvin, the one with B tackle. I wanted to make sure that he could tackle. Great speed. B tackle. We don't know his coverages yet, but he ran a 4 4 at 6 foot 2. He looks really good. Always looking to intercept the ball. Motor is always running hot. Often looks to rip the ball from runners. Typically avoids getting flagged. His top fits are with the Cowboys twice. Star or better development. 93 speed. 88 jumping. 92 change of direction. 92 agility. 92 acceleration. He looks outstanding as well. I can't believe how many star or better developments we have. That is absurd. Okay, what other guy do we want? We want Perez. And that's pretty much about it. And uh, Selvi goes, at least for what I've written down, at least with the uh, three running backs, which I'm not, I'm only going to take the one. And then the, the Heisman winner is Perez, but he's not till later. Is there anyone else that we, what draft picks do we have? We have 20 and then we don't draft till round four. Okay. I'm just going to take the wide receiver then. I could trade down and add some more picks, but I'm not. Uh, let's take the Heisman winner and just see if uh, he has star better development as a Heisman winner. That's uh, kind of the big thing I want to know. Six feet tall. And he was, was he the fastest receiver? Yeah, he was the fastest receiver. So he looks exciting. Star or better development, 95 speed. I Honestly, we, we killed the draft. We killed it. All right. I, I'm not going to draft the rest. Let's just sim to the end. See how we did overall. I think we did pretty well for the first time I've ever done this. I think, I think we did pretty well. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it ends up being really cool. I, I actually do like the fact that we don't know the, any of the overalls. I do wish that we could see the overalls of the players that we didn't draft initially right away. But again, we can see it in the draft recap. So does it really matter? I don't know. But we do know all the star developments and stuff like that. So uh, Cliff Cole was an 83 overall. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's one thing it doesn't show you. It doesn't show you if we drafted the number one overall player, right? Or did I miss that? It, it, it didn't show if we took like the number one player or the number five player. And you know, like how it says like you took the number one player in the class at eighth overall or, or whatever. I don't think it showed that. Star better development though. He's an 83 overall. He's amazing. Zone coverage is a 77. Man is an 84. And then you know what? Screw it. Let's see their developments. Let's see. Why not? Why not? I'm not taking this like super seriously. I don't usually look until, uh, you know, I like to be surprised. But player trait, he is a star. Okay. So the highest rated player in the, in the class is a star development. 
I told you guys, most of these guys are going to be star, probably. Sean McCollum is a 76 overall, star or better, wearing number 15. It's weird. No, who else wears number 15 for, for Kansas City? Hmm. I don't know. Weird. Uh, 95 throw power. 80 deep accuracy, 76 medium accuracy, 82 short. This accuracy is actually pretty good. 80 on the run. Break sack is an 86. I can't believe how fast this guy is. Um, it's That is absurd. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's really good. Really excited about him. Let's see what his development trade is. Let's see how well we did with the number one overall quarterback, the star, dude. Ah, uh, we were all excited about the star better developments and they're all gonna suck. Reggie Cobb was a 78 overall star better development. Uh, finesse moves is actually a lot lower than I thought it was gonna be 78. It's not bad, but eh, 81 tackle, 77 block shed. Okay, his injury is at a, was at an 86 and I believe his injury was a bit lower if I'm not mistaken. So I guess the injury, you know, when it's an F, it's probably like low 80s maybe. Um, when it's, uh, A is probably like high nineties or, you know, all that stuff. Uh, star is this game broken? Is this update broken? Did we just, are you serious? They're all star developments. Roy Bullard, star better development. He's a 72 overall, um, 89 speed, 79 tackle, 82 hit power, 71 block shed, 81 pursuit, 91 acceleration, 80, uh, strength. And it did say his pass rush was really good. I guess for a linebacker, it was really good. 66 power moves. Okay. I'm guessing star development. It's probably going to be really depressing. Let's see. Uh, superstar. Hey, we got one. We got one. Superstar development. I'll take it. I will take it. Michael Gore, 75 overall. Hidden development, 94 speed, 73 man, 68 zone. Yeah, this dude looks like a linebacker slash safety. Tackle is only a 68, so maybe safety, I guess. Hit power is at a 70. I don't know. I mean, he could probably get better as a linebacker at 6'3", 204. Could you imagine the speed at linebacker if we move this guy uh, with the guy that we have? Oh, my God. That'd be so much speed. It'd be so much speed. And he's, he's, he's pretty he's pretty big. So we could uh, the other guy at six foot two, he's probably more of a safety if his coverage isn't very good. Um, but let's see what his player trait is. Superstar. There you go. Back to back. Superstar. So we have a we drafted a superstar corner, which more than likely I'd put at linebacker in a four three. Um with Bullard. So we have Bullard and Gore at linebacker with all that speed. Uh, Coles at the end or at corner Cobb. We have a good defense building here. Halfback Josh Patterson, 77 overall. He has a 93 speed, uh, 75 stiff arm, 69 trucking, 80 back cut vision, uh, 87 carrying, pretty good. 83 juke, 77 spin, change of directions to 93. Agility is an 87. Injury was at an 87. Um, and then let's see, star or better development. Hopefully it's better than Star. He did win an award. What was it? He was the Patterson. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, he. He wasn't. I think he was his conference running back of the year. He was a running back of the year, basically. Uh, and he's superstar. There we go. Oh, that's much better. Okay, okay. The three that I really wanted to be have like superstar X Factor aren't, but the next three, beautiful. Tight end Jack Hampton. He's a 74 overall. That's pretty good. Six foot six, 86 speed, 84 catching, uh, 87 excel. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing this is, I, I, I guarantee you, this is star development more than likely. Tight, I've, I don't think it's rare to get a tight end at superstar. Oh my God, he's superstar. Oh my God. We literally have Travis Kelsey 2.0. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm changing his number. It's awful. Why is he wearing that number? Uh, we're not going to give him Kelsey's number. We'll give him uh, the next one down. 86. Okay. Uh, 88, Tony Gonzalez. 87, Jarvis Kelsey. 80, number number 86, Jack Hampton. Uh, Melvin Aldridge was the other corner. 
bigger corner, six foot two. He's a zone corner. Uh, 74 overall, 93 speed. Yeah, his man coverage is not good. His own coverage is really good. This is a safety. 63 tackles low, though. Mm, he looks more like a safety to me. Uh, but let's see. Uh, let's see what his development trait is. I believe he had star better, right? Star. Okay. Yeah, not surprising there. Star. Star development for that guy. And then Perez. Okay, so this was a Heisman winner. He is a 73 overall. Um, six feet tall, 191, 95 speed, 90 excel, 81 catch, 86 catch in traffic. Spectacular catch is really low. Okay. Hmm. All right, six feet tall. He is really fast though, at, at a 95 speed. He is he really he is only six feet tall. So, uh, and then let's see, star better, star. So Heisman still gives you probably almost guaranteed to star better. It's just this guy happened to be star. So there you go. Those are my draft picks. Uh, the computer actually drafted a defensive tackle for me. It's a 70 overall normal development. There are normal developments. It's the first normal development we've seen. Uh, but let's look at the overall board and let's see any guys that like I missed. Uh, so let's go ahead and rate this uh, by overall. We did get the number one overall player. Jamal Salvi actually ended up being the best running back at a 79 overall. 95 speed. He looks really good. He's 5 foot 11. Our running back was superstar, right? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure our running back was a superstar. This guy's a star. We made the right choice. We made the right choice. Um, okay. Let's see. Anyone else that we missed out on here? Wow, we got three of the top four. Gilchrist is a 77 overall. Right in normal development. Uh, there's a good center in this class. Uh, oh, Eric McCord was also a 76 overall. Normal development. Wow. Wow. 90 through 92 throw power. What's the speed? 81. 81 is decent, but only normal development. Oh, that sucks. Waters was also a guy that I liked, but normal development. Did we seriously get that lucky? Tony Bradham, 75 overall normal development. Did we get all the star better guys? Chamberlain, normal. Um, let's see. Anyone else that I was looking at here? Oh, Scarborough was a guy that I thought about. Normal development. Um, let's see. Jack Hampton we took. Oh, Alfonso Grayson was another guy we looked at. Normal development. This is crazy. D. Roberts was the other corner. Okay, he has star better. He's a 74 overall. 94 speed. 71 man. 74 zone. So he's a better cover corner than the guy that we ended up taking over him. He goes to New England. Let's see what his development trait is. That corner was a star, I believe, that we took. He's a superstar. So I think this guy's, this guy's probably better. Yeah, I took the better tackler instead. Of taking him um so that's probably our first miss there um but i mean the guy we took is still a star development so because we took mcleod or no not mcleod uh who did we take hold on let me go to let me write the overall here we took we took aldridge yeah so we took aldridge instead of d roberts and the reason why i took aldridge d roberts is faster uh, Aldridge just because I wanted his tackling because I thought about moving him to safety. Um, which is only a 63 tackling, so I guess that kind of backfired. And then he had a B tackling, so that's why I took him. And then he, I believe, has star development. I believe. Yeah. So we, we missed on that one. We missed on that one. We still got a good player, but we missed on that one. So there you go, guys. Um, yeah. Overall, I, I think that went really, really well really well uh we took some really good players um yeah let me know if you guys want me to continue like this sim um and maybe we like rebuild this team i don't know i, I mean that that might be kind of fun so let me know in the comments below but yeah uh i just i that quarterback is so freaking fast i cannot believe how fast he is that is crazy oh, by the way we can now uh, hire and assign scouts so like now our number one position that we want to look at 
we have a top receiver or at least a number one well i don't know about number one receiver but we have a good receiver uh we have a good running back we have a good quarterback we have a good tight end we have a good rush end we have a good corner i would say the most important thing for us is probably uh man i don't know we got a good linebacker we have two good we have two good linebackers we have a good safety one good corner good defensive end i would say defensive tackle and defensive end and wide receiver and then offensive line okay so let's say uh let's fire everyone okay everyone's being fired we need uh we need new scouts because obviously we have we have we have new needs right uh oh you know what we should probably get safety as well so let's do what do we want to look at here for our top tier i would say oh look, oh by the way uh former players richard seymour tj hushman zada um yeah there there's like former players which is pretty cool but anyways uh let's see most important position right now that we need might be linebacker maybe safety team. i don't know i might make it wide receiver yeah let's make our top priority wide receiver and then let's make our second priority maybe a defensive tackle since we would be doing a 4-3. That actually might should be probably number one, but we'll make it number two. And then let's do uh let's do offensive line for one. That was what, left guard and center. Um we probably need tackles. So we can maybe find oh wow, there's no left tackles. Wow, okay. Uh, oh no, here we go. Let's hire him and then um we haven't hired safeties yet right safety help for a scout so let's do that safety 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 um boom so that that's kind of what we would do at that point look at my scouts so we have three ones a two and a three i mean we could probably sw swap those but we'll keep it at that and then that's what we would go into the following year but this is really cool. Uh, really cool. I think for the first draft that we've ever done, it's pretty freaking good. Pretty uh, pretty impressive, honestly. I'm really excited about our quarterback. And um, yeah, pretty dang cool. Uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts are um, on this update. Uh, do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? What other tweaks or improvements do you think they could make? I would like to know a little bit more about, you know, I, I want more players at 100%, essentially, is what I want. Um, so, yeah, that that's essentially because we had, what, two players at 100%? Like, that's not good enough. We had a great draft. That doesn't mean that's, I mean, we maybe we just got really lucky, right? Or maybe we just had a really good draft. But, like, I don't know. I don't know. Those were all first-round guys, by the way. So, like, when you're looking later in the draft, what happens, right? Like, what what happens with that like we don't have a first round pick by the way next season so i don't know anyways let me know what you guys think in the comments below hit that like button if you did enjoy subscribe if you guys are new to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next episode later guys all right let's see how fast this guy is mccollum how fast are you yeah he's fast 94 speed 94 speed he's so fast this guy's awesome